Wow, here we are again, Brother Pennywood. Tidbits from the Word. I have decided that I would do a dossier on who I am, where I've been, and where I'm going. And uh, people that are going to study behind other people, kind of, would like to know a little bit about the person. I study behind many, many, many people and have now, ever since 1972, November 5th, I started studying the Bible and studying behind people, notable people. My first experiences as after salvation was I was affiliated with some people who were affiliated with Tennessee Temple in Tennessee, Chattanooga. And I would go there often. And I didn't go to the school, but I did the school work with people that did the school work without being recognized doing the school work. Well, there came a day when I, a father uh, said to me that he had a college in LaGrange, Georgia, and it was called Titus Baptist Seminary. And I went to it, and I graduated there, the seminary, in 2016. And in graduating the second, the first time, I graduated in uh, 2014, I think, and I got an associate of theology degree with my name on it, and that I graduated. And then the next time I graduated was in 2016, and I became Peter Hutchins with a doctorate of theology. And so I have a doctorate now in theology. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm studying still in the same book, Wilmington's Guide to the Bible, is one of the books I used in this college work. And I'm still using it, and I'm going to put some verses out of it uh, in your mind so you'll know what, what, where I come from and what I'm doing and that I am a Bible studier, and that uh, what I do and say, I try to make it be worthy of somebody else listening to it and gleaning from it and be encouraged themselves into getting in the Bible. Now, I was born in the main Ioneer. This is my original birth certificate, our very original birth certificate. And this certifies that Peter Allen Hutchins was born at 7.24 p.m. on the 13th day of September in A.D. 1941. And that was when I was born. It was signed by Dr. Dorsey and another doctor. And it's got my footprints on it. So they can still take my footprint and match it with this certificate and it will work. Now, that's enough about me. The thing about it is, is in 1972, I was a full-fledged alcoholic. God saw fit to save me and to put me in the ministry. I, I, I went directly. <coughs> I got saved on November 5th, and that next Sunday, I went and got baptized. The following Sunday, I went to the jailhouse in Troop County, Georgia, and in LaGrange, Georgia, and I started preaching in the jailhouse. And I preached in the jail and in the prison for about 10 years on every week. I preached in there every week. I ran a school called Source of Light Missions, and they were out of a town in Georgia. I can't get it in my mind right now, but you could look up Source of Light and find their literature. It's probably the best, barring none, the best literature for a person starting out to use and go through their books. And they have a, a book called the Book of John, the first book, second, third, fourth, fifth book, and several books you go through, and you can school in those. That's the first thing I did the first couple of years I was saved. And I also taught those books in the prison house until it came to a point one day where some prisoners started a fire with some of that literature 
And that, that put a stop to me bringing it in. So, the Holy Ghost. A lot of people are afraid to say that word. The Holy Ghost. That is the Holy Ghost of God has the light divine shining upon the hearts of mine and, and chase the shadows of night away and turn my darkness into day. He chased all of those misery days, all of those wicked days I lived completely out of my life and came into my life, the Holy Spirit of God came into my life and renewed my spirit and renewed me into a place where I could start schooling in a Christian manner and being in God's will. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God, Romans 8, 27. Now I've given my heart to God and I try to keep it searched by the Holy Spirit at all times. Have I failed? Yes, I have failed many times. But the answer to failure is, Lord Jesus, I have failed. Please forgive me and reunite me and keep me going here. So the Son of God is seen in verse 34 of Romans 8, while the second he refers to the Holy Spirit himself. What a fantastic truth this is. See here. For the believer enjoys the intercessory ministry of both the Son and the Holy Spirit. So we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in one. And we have them in our heart. And I asked him into my heart <coughs> November 5th, 3 o'clock in the morning, 1972. So, uh, but God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. And I've been searching ever since then the deeper things of God. I've taught, I've preached, I've wore out several of these things right here, these Bibles. I've got many of them. And uh, God has blessed my life in this manner. But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. 1 Corinthians 2.10 In this verse, just prior to this, in 2 and 9, Paul paraphrases from Isaiah 64.4 and writes, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things that God hath prepared for them that love Him. Wow! God has given me the exactly opposite life than what I had the first 30 years of my life. Because of this, some have erroneously concluded that it is impossible for even the redeemed to know anything concerning heaven. But, listen to this but, biggest but, and one of the biggest buts in the Bible. Here in 2.10, we are told that the Holy Spirit reveals such things to us. And the Holy Spirit has revealed to me that this is the truth. Now, as I started out, I graduated from Titus Baptist Seminary, and uh, we used this book. If you'll get this, Wilmington's Guide to the Bible. You get one of these. If you want to uh, get a hold of Titus Baptist Seminary, you can do it online. And uh, the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit out of faithful men. And I'm trying to tell you if you're a faithful man, to try this out. Who shall be able to teach others also? So you'll be able to teach others also if you will commit this to your heart. From Titus Baptist Seminary, and it's www.titusbaptistseminary.org. 
and that is in LaGrange, Georgia. So if you try that, Titus Baptist Seminary uh, in a dot of LaGrange, all one word, <clears throat> and get in touch with Dennis Barr, tell them you were watching a PH tidbit, <clears throat> and got your information from it. And he will send you the literature to get started. It is a free gratis school. You pay as you go what you can pay. If you're a person who cannot pay honestly and earnestly, cannot pay, let it be known. And you could cover the cost of the postage or such as that if you could. And you will get what you need to get started in Titus Baptist Seminary. And I will tell you, this Wilmington's Guide to the Bible, you can find it on the internet in the book area. I think that I bought this one for about $19. I have another one I think I bought for about $19 or less. And uh, these are a very expensive book, but you can find them in good condition. Both of mine are in mint condition. The only marks in them are where I have marked them all the way through. As I studied them, I wrote in them, and I marked them. And I, I made sure that I knew where I had been and where I was going. And I have one, this is not the one that's marked all the way through, I have one that is marked all the way through, where I studied it all the way through. And that's important. After you get saved, it's important that you study the doctrines of the Bible. The first doctrine is salvation by faith, where you say, God, I do believe. If I ask you to forgive me, you'll forgive me, and you'll send the Holy Spirit to come into my heart and save my soul. And after that, if I cuss, you will smite my heart and say, hey, you don't do that anymore. You've been saved. And if I, I go to steal something, the Holy Spirit will say, uh, hey, hey, wait a minute now. You might have used to could do that, but you can't do that anymore. You are saved now. Saved people do not steal. They don't lie. They don't cheat. They don't do things that are opposite of what God would have them do without being smited in the heart. So if you uh, t t tell, and I've done it, I've done it, I've done it since I got saved, uh, tell a false price on something, and the Lord said to me, that ain't right. Tell that person what you paid for that gallon of paint. Well, I bought it for $10. What did it sell for? 23 I bought it for less than what it sold for. What would be fair for me to say? I went to the store. I spent my hour. My hour, I make $10. And I paid uh, 10, $10 or $12 for it, so the, uh, the gallon of paint is $22. That's the fair thing to do. Be honest about it. And even though that person couldn't go to the store and buy it for that small price, but you could. So, if you're not telling the truth, you're telling a lie. So we must be careful that we be truthful. I want the Holy Spirit on my side. I don't want the Holy Spirit to be putting a line across me and saying something about something I did or am doing or I'm going to do. And that's why I study many books and many things. I have many helps. It is not wrong to have many helps. One of the helps I'm going to be using in my teaching here on PH Tidbits is my Salem Curban Bible. This Bible I would suggest to you uh, start looking at Bibles online and see if you can find a Salem Curban Bible at a good price. I don't remember exactly what I paid for this one, but I will tell you this. If I had paid $100 for it, it would have been worth it. If I had paid $100 for it, it would have been worth it. I don't remember how much I paid for it. I've had it for years and years and the pages have fallen out of it. I've marked it pretty much all the way through this particular Bible. I've studied it from cover to cover. And I've marked it from cover to cover. And I love it. It's one of my favorite Bibles. 
and Mr. Salem Kirvin was an Arab, and he had a, another partner that was with him, <coughs> who was not an Arab, who <coughs> helped him put this together. <coughs> and uh, this one here, printing, was first I bought in 1979, one of the first ones out. And uh, and it and it was uh, uh, it has a lot of help notes in it from Charles Haddon Spurgeon. Now his devotional notes are in here. So Gary G. Cohan was a help author in, with with um, Salem Kirvin and Gary G. Cohan and. Gary, uh, Gary G. Cohan explains the difficult verses, the ones that are difficult to, uh, to understand. Uh, he went to Clearwater Christian College in Florida. His signet appears at the bottom of each commentary written by him. Uh, I have a uh, Salem Kerman was the editor and he was the uh, commentary author. And Salem Kerman's commentary appears in 1100 of Bible text pages. He is the author of 35 books, of which over 20 deal with Bible prophecy. He co-authored Revelation Visualized with Dr. Gary G. Cohan. All unsigned commentary was written by Salem Kirby. The commentaries that he did not sign that are in this Bible, he wrote them, he did not sign all of them. This is another one called The Believers. You have to be a believer to study the Bible. The Believers Bible Commentary by William MacDonald. This is one of the best. I'm actually going to be speaking some out of this particular commentary today. And uh, it is a very, very good commentary. Uh, and I, another one of my Bibles I'm going to be using today, and I don't use this Bible very often because it's not the King James Version, which I usually use all the time. But this is the International Version, of the Bible and I studied King James so much I can take this one and translate it into King James as I read it most of the time but in thee O Lord have I taken refuge let me never be ashamed now if you don't want to be ashamed at any time in your Christian life you need to take this Psalm 31 and put it in your heart and not be ashamed in the righteousness deliver me in thy righteousness Lord deliver me mankind has no righteousness of his own only by God do we have righteousness incline thine ear to me rescue me quickly be thou to me a rock of strength a stronghold to save me wow you must be in the hand of God to be able to read Psalm 31 and claim it. I would recommend, if you've not been saved a little bit, that you would get Psalm 31 on and you would claim it for yourself. That it would be your rock. It would be your stronghold for you to be, be able to go to. For thou art my rock and my fortress. For thy name's sake, thou will feed me and guide me. If you will use his book, and like I said, I use the King James Version. Using his book, he will feed you and guide you. Thou will pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me. For thou art my strength. The world is going to lay a net for you. If you are in the ministry, if you started in the ministry, you have to be careful. We are as men. We have to be careful as men that we do not get fraternized with a female in a manner that would be 
obvious to somebody else that it was more than a spiritual thing. Fraternizing with a female can get you in more trouble than you've ever been in before. It can ruin your witness. It can get you put out of the ministry. And by the way, it doesn't take very much to pull a man away from the direction that he's supposed to be going if you're not careful. Men are weak in this area. Been weak ever since God made a woman and gave that woman to man. Man has been weak in that area. And so we must be careful. But I trust in the Lord. So we got to be careful. We don't uh, we watch and mind our steps, where we walk, how we walk, or we can ruin our testimony very quickly. You say, Brother Peter, if I'm going to Bible school, <clears throat> would it be a likelihood that I might mess up my life with a female? Yes. Whenever you're in a mixed company, you're in a mixed company, and there are females and males in there. You need to mind your P's and Q's. You need to be careful of what you do with your eyes, what you do with your mouth, what you do with your body. You need to be very careful of what you do. So I have seen my affliction, he said. Thou hast known the troubles of my soul, and thou hast not given me over under the hand of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a large place. Now, this is right here what I'm talking about. That, For instance, the Bible said when you get saved, Brother Peter, you used to be a thief. You used to steal anything you could steal. Now I'm telling you, you got saved, steal no more. So steal no more. So before you got saved, did you commit adultery? Yes, I did. I was an adulteress before I got saved. I eyed every woman that come along. Not that they would eye me. But my mind, I would eye them. And so, therefore, I was an adulteress in my mind and in that way. So, therefore, no more to be an adulteress. He said, I will rejoice and be glad in thy loving kindness because thou hast seen my affliction. Thou hast known the trouble of my soul. God knew me, and God knows me. He knows what I was, and He knows where I have to be careful to not be the same way today. And we have problems today. Scantily dressed women trigger the mind of a man. And so, and we are men. Now, you never, but never, but never, if you're a Christian, you're working in the ministry now, and you're growing, never counsel a woman in private. Never, ever counsel a woman in private without a third party. There must be a third party if you're counseling a woman. If not, you'll end up like a preacher friend I've got. Divorced his wife and married a woman he was counseling. And for some reason, she appealed to him more than his wife. You see, the devil works that way. So do not ever counsel a woman by yourself in a private setting, especially sitting in a car or sitting somewhere that you shouldn't be in the first place with a woman that's not your wife. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am... A, in distress, my eye is wasted away from grief. My soul and my body also, for my life is spent with sorrow. Now, this is a psalm of David. What happened to David? David took a man's wife, and her name was Bathsheba, and he killed the man. The lust of the flesh will do things that a man normally would never do. Would never do. I never do. A, a man that's married, got a good wife, good family, good everything, and if he allows the lust of his flesh to rise up 
in a private setting with a woman, things can happen that can ruin his life forever for one moment of failure. I'm telling you, men, watch out. Women, watch out. Women, if you are a saved woman, don't you give a good eye to another man. Don't you eyeball another man. Don't you say with your eyes, hey, I'll talk to you. No, don't say anything to that man other than, I'm married. Has failed because of my iniquity, and my body has wasted away. David had come to the place in his life where he felt like God had pushed him away, cut him off, and said, I'm not going to deal with you anymore until you get this thing straightened out. And isn't that a gracious God that would take keep David and would keep him under his wings still after he took the man's wife and killed the man? Wow. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted away from grief. My soul and my body also. For my life is spent with sorrow. My years with singing. My uh, strength has failed because of my iniquity. And my body has wasted away. Iniquity. I kept smoking for one year after I got saved. Smoking, to me, became iniquity. I couldn't smoke in the public. I wouldn't let nobody know I was still smoking. Of course, they could smell me know I was. But I'd go out back of the house and light a cigarette up. Three o'clock one morning, one year after I saved, God delivered me from cussing, swearing, alcohol, stealing, all kinds of things. And he delivered me from them cigarettes, too, at the same time, but I didn't put them down. So I kept smoking, so I went out there at 3 o'clock in the morning. It was about November 5th, in 1973, and I went out there, and I was going to light a cigarette, and it wouldn't, my lighter wouldn't light. And the Lord said to me, I delivered you from them cigarettes, same time I delivered you from everything else. I said, God, forgive me. And I threw that cigarette down and stomped it. And never to this day ever put another one in my mouth or lit another one. Now you can't hang on to the world. You say, but, but all I am hanging on to is a cigarette. A cigarette is an open door for the devil to enter in and have his way with you. Because you can't smoke and pray. You can't smoke and study the Bible. I know because I tried it. I dropped an ash on my Bible one day, right here, and dropped that ash. Sonny Holland did the same thing one time, and that ash burned a hole. So I got another Bible and looked at it, and the hole it burnt was power. It burned the word power. And if you're smoking, you can't have power. The power of God will deliver you from cigarettes. If the power you have in you of God is not big enough to deliver you from smoking, you don't have enough power to walk around during the day. Because you're going to get in spiritual trouble every day. Because of all my adversaries, I have become a reproach, especially to my neighbors. Now, David said that, but I got news for you. It wasn't because of his adversaries. It was because of the way he had lived and the way he had sinned, the way he had took Bathsheba, the way he had uh, uh, played the harlot on his own wives. He had other wives. And he, he put those wives in back in order to put this woman in the front. Oh, don't you know how bad they must have felt? The hair comes up. A, a woman that would appear as a harlot that she would go lay with him while she was married. And an and object of the uh, dread to my uh, acquaintance, those who see me in the street flee from me. Just think. All these people that had faith in David. All that had great faith. This man right here. He can't do no wrong. 
He even danced in the street naked and it wasn't considered wrong. He did many things and they didn't consider it wrong. But when he took another man's wife, it, it shined up like a red light in a Christian's life. <coughs> I am forgotten as a dead man. Out of mind, I am like a broken vessel. I got news for you. If you fail God in your life, you're going to feel like a broken vessel. Once you have the Holy Spirit in your heart, and you do something that fails Him, you're going to feel like a broken vessel. I've been there many times, especially when the first year or two I was saved. Many times. For I have heard the slander of many. Terror is on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they schemed to take away my life. David had done such a sin that the people that he had taught, the people he had loved, the people he had, that had trusted him. But as for me, I will trust in thee, O Lord, I say. Thou art my God. Wow. He's coming back home. Right here in verse 14 of Psalm 31. And my time is in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from those who persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me in thy loving kindness. Let me not be put to shame, O Lord, for I call upon thee. The wicked be put to shame. Let them be uh, silent in shield. Wow. That is a great, great uh, statement right there because Sheol is in the, was in the heart of the earth and that was folks that had already gone on who can view what is happening. Let the lying lips be dumb which speak arrogantly against the righteous with pride and contempt. Wow. But when the righteous man falls, those around him are going to speak against him. How great is thy goodness, which thou hast stored up for those who fear thee, which thou hast wrought for those who take refuge in thee before the Son of Men. Thou dost hide them in the secret place of thy presence from the uh, conspiracies of men. Thou dost keep them secretly in a shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he hath made marvelous things, loving kindness to me in a besieged city. And by the way, right here I believe that he's considering himself as a besieged city. As for me, I said in my alarm, I'm cut off from thine eyes, before thine eyes. Nevertheless, I did hear the voice of my supplication when I cried to thee. O love the Lord, all you his godly ones. The Lord preserveth the faithful and fully recompenses the proud doer. Be strong. Let your heart take courage, all you who hope in the Lord. And that is the end of Psalm 31. I suggest that you take Psalm 31 and read it until you can quote it, 24 verses, and use it in your own life and see the story of a man who was God's man and he had fallen. And he got back up. And he started back out. But he had to outlive the ridicule. It is difficult to outlive a failure or a ridicule that you get when you fail spiritually. It is difficult to outlive that. But you can do it if you will. Well, our time is come and gone. This is Brother Peter saying goodbye. We'll see you next time. We are going to be... Uh, doing a, a intensive study in uh, the book of Joel next. We'll see you. Bye. Bye-bye.